and welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Decades Challenge. We ended the last episode at the end of day one of 1315 after doing the famine rolls, so we are now officially cursed with the knowledge of who is destined to die and who will survive. During the first day of the famine, we also had Rosemary and Alexander successfully survive their birthdays, and we briefly visited Quentin's house with Brayden, Frederick, and Noah, who on their way there were robbed. I realized as I was editing that I didn't actually bring the robber to the lot, which I should have done so that they could all meet and become enemies. So if we roll another encounter, I will keep that in mind and I'll actually have our sims interact with the outlaw so that we can later either get revenge or try to warn the guards about them. We'll see how things go. All right, it is now the next day. We have cold-blooded Kaylin out here practicing archery. I have a feeling Kaylin might eventually want to join the army or the king's guard or something. So I think it does make sense to have him start practicing some more martial hobbies. Stephanie is up and preparing breakfast for everybody so that she can practice her cooking a little. And for real, she is the only sim taking care of the kids at this point because Rosemary has been busy and Frederick as well. And we have Adriana already having her breakfast out here. And then she wants to talk to the stuffed animal. So I am going to have her do that. There, she can go cheer him up because even he's sad that it's the famine. And she didn't finish her bowl, which is fine because her hunger was getting pretty high anyways. Uh, so if we could just have some... Uh-oh. No, 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 no. You're not sick, are you? No, okay, she's not sick, or at least not yet. Uh, I don't know if I can preemptively try to get rid of a cold or something, but I am going to have her... And she can't get water. I'm going to wait for Brayden to wake up, and then we're actually going to do a roll to see if him and his brother Frederick make it to becoming teens. So this is going to be an important role since Brayden is our current heir. Aw, Stephanie is coming to watch the birds. She is so bored. I'm going to have to find her a hobby. I would expect her to like cooking since it's a, since it's a very homely yeah. thing to do. All right, so our twins have eaten and it is time to see if our heir makes it to being 18. So we're gonna do Brayden first since he is the firstborn and he cannot roll a seven. And he gets 17, which is fine. And now let's take a look at his brother, Frederick Jr. And he is also fine. So our twins both make it to being teens. Since we are now in the famine, I am not going to organize a birthday party because it might be a bit too dangerous to ask people to come here. So I am just going to go ahead and age them up. All right, so Brayden has aged up. He was a glutton and he is now high maintenance, cheerful and paranoid. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I reserve the right to change one trait when he ages up. High maintenance, I think, might actually make sense because I've mentioned before that he is pretty proud to be the heir and he might want to live a slightly more luxurious life and so he might be affected by very trivial things. But I don't think paranoid fits so i am going to remove paranoid and oops the entire slot just disappeared okay i am going to fix that and cast later so for the aspiration i am going to go for a teen aspiration and i normally would roll but i feel like brayden is clearly an admired icon he wants to be popular i think or he could be goal oriented no, I'm pr I think Admired Icon fits best. I think he wants everybody to like him and he wants to be popular. He would probably also want to impress the girls and everything. Uh, so he has high self-esteem. That is great. And he aged up with some fabulous hair. And he looks okay. 
He's not very handsome. He's just okay. So, what about Frederick? All right, so Frederick was a animal enthusiast. He is now stone-hearted, unflirty, insider. Um, okay. Stone-hearted. I... This is the one I disagree with the most. Uh, and I was thinking of giving him, like, the envious trait instead, since I think that would fit better. As for his aspiration... I think he might be a drama llama, but I'm going to roll for him. One, live fast. This sim aims to get the most out of life by living carefree and rules free. Well, I can't see carefree. I don't know if he would be. Oh boy, the hair. Uh, rebellious teen phase or something. I what blue. Okay. Uh, we're going to change that. And I think he might actually be a bit more handsome than his twin. Um, but we're going to take them into Cass and take a look. Okay, so Brayden looks a bit weird. He seems very thin to me. And uh, why is his chest like bulging out on the sides? Uh, what about Frederick? Oh god, what is wrong with their chests? Oh, okay, so both of them are really, really thin at the moment, which I guess sort of makes sense because it's the famine. I'm just not sure their hips just seem to be in, like to have a really weird proportions. Anyways, I I'll see what they look like when they become adults, if they become adults. Uh, okay, so what can be done with this? Yeah, Frederick is definitely the more handsome of the two. That's, that's a shame. All right, so this is our Air Brayden after his makeover. I kept him with a little headband so that we keep recognizing him. He did have slightly longer hair when he aged up, but I thought this was fairly similar to what he had before and is a bit less over the top. So I did give him the self-assured trait because the ambitious trait is not allowed per the rules. I'm not really sure why, maybe because it has more to do with a career. So I thought self-assured would be a fair replacement. And this is his brother, Frederick Jr. I gave him the envious trait because I agreed with one of the comments that said a long while back that Frederick might be a little bit evil. I didn't go specifically with evil because I think his negative feelings are specifically against Brayden because Brayden was born barely a few minutes before he was and ended up being the heir while Frederick, who is arguably the better suited of the two to take over the farm, is not going to inherit. So we do have two roles left to do and those would be to know if Frederick is going to get married and if he is going to have children. So to know if he's going to marry, we have to roll a d20. If he gets 1 to 3, he does not get married. If he rolls 4 to 20, he gets married. And he does get married. And now we're going to roll a d12 to see how many pregnancy attempts that he's going to get. One is no children. Huh. Okay. So that's interesting. Frederick Jr. is going to get married, but he is not going to have any children. So either his wife might be barren or he might have a bad relationship with her. So this is interesting. We're going to see how things play out. Who is he going to meet? Who is he going to marry? And why are they not going to have children? It could also just be a situation where his wife or him is going to pass away before they ever really get a chance to have children. We're going to have to see. Okay, so Trader Jacques is here. I'm gonna have Rosemary come and speak to him. Is he speaking to the mailbox? So I don't think he's going to have any food to trade since it is the famine. He might even be here to ask if they have food that they might be able to trade. And he's probably going to tell them about how bad things are around the kingdom. And he's doing his best to try and supply food to people who really need it. But so far, things have not been going well. Uh... Excuse me? What? Okay. So it just immediately cancelled. What the hell was that? 
She got propositioned by Trader Jacques? Get out of here. Send home. Goodbye, Trader Jacques. You're done being a creep. Man, she probably thought it was really awkward and she's like, Yeah, so thanks for the news. See you later. Bye. Aw, look at Frederick trying to impress his parents by cleaning up. And little Alex in the back. He needs to be potty trained. So you know what, Frederick? You want to be helpful? You are going to potty train your little brother. Sad to see you go from seeing a beloved cow get sold away. Oh, what have I done? From loyal sim cheating on partner? No, <laughs> not this again. You were flirted with, Rosemary. It's not the same thing. All right, well, at least we made back all of the money that was stolen for from us. I don't even know if the kids would have told Rosemary. You know, I think Brayden might actually be a bit too enraged. Worst they ever- Oh, no. <laughs> what? 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 No, 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 no. What? He got killed by his high maintenance trait. Are you freaking kidding me? As soon as he aged up to a teen, he got killed by the high ma How dumb is this? Oh no. Well, this famine is really starting off. Well, oh no. Okay, who are we going to have plead for him? Probably not his brother, because his brother is probably going to be pretty happy about this. Very confident. Ugh. I kind of do want- I mean, he's still his twin brother, you know? There must be a piece of you that kind of dies with him when you lose a twin. I guess? I don't know. Sort of like with any family member who dies. So I don't think he would be- Like, I think he wants the farm, but I don't think he necessarily wants his brother to die for it. I can't believe- Oh no, and Rosemary, who was cheerful, is now gloomy. She lost her oldest son. Oh. Rosemary is affected by the famine and losing her s- oh gosh. That's so sad. Witness death. Oh my god. Oh no, Frederick is there. Oh, this is so sad. He lost his sister suddenly and now his son? Oh no. The whole family is here. Even Noah is freaking shocked. I can't believe this. There's Frederick. Frederick Jr. realizing, you know what? I think I am going to save my brother. This is too sad. I don't want my parents to deal with this. I am going to tell the Grim Reaper what's what, and he is going to demand that his twin brother be spared. See, he was even crying there. Come on, Frederick. I believe in you. Here we go. Let me just grab a quick picture of this. You know, Brayden is the courageous one. Brayden is the self-assured one, but Frederick is still going to do what he can for his twin brother. And he is going to tell the Grim Reaper, you are not taking my brother today if you know what's good for you. Oh, Frederick in the back. Oh, the parents in the back. How did the Barrow family get so unlucky so quickly? Come on. Come on, Frederick. Yes! Yes! You literally just saved my life. Words can't even begin to describe how grateful I am. Really, I won't forget this. Yes! Our first successful plea. Oh, thank you. Goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Grim Reaper. And and like nobody nobody else cares. They're just like, well, okay then. Yeah, Brayden is back. And he feels good about himself. And oh my god, we have to get you calmed down as soon as possible because this is probably going to be a regular occurrence. Why why did they make a trait that could instantly kill you like this? This I'm regretting which trait that I that I changed now. See, he has so many positive moodlets and he's still enraged. Man, I am in shock, honestly. 
So I think Brayden is going to be our first sim who is going to find religion to try and get rid of that dangerous trait. So I've purchased a stool here so that Brayden can start meditating to try and get his wellness skill up. And we should definitely think about getting him married sooner rather than later. He's 13 now, so he's still got three years to go before he can get married. And Frederick rolling not to have any kids is a bit scary to me because if something happens to Brayden, then Frederick becomes the heir. And if he hasn't had any kids, um, he might have to have them late in life if he becomes our main sim. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to play out. So I'm going to have Brayden come and meditate right away. Oh, he wants to be friendly with his twin. So death is here, just chilling. I think Kaylin might actually try to talk to him. Oh, we can't. Okay, then. Oh, the Grim Reaper is a young adult. Oh, what is this now? Stephanie is hysterical. No, 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 no. No, I don't want any of that. We already lost one kid today. Well, almost. Uh, okay, she wants to have fun and her hunger is low. Did they already eat? Yeah, they already ate for the day. Well, it is 7 p.m., so she should survive. Uh, what can I have her do that won't kill her? Oh, maybe she can come and fish. Maybe that's going to relax her a little and get rid of the hysterical mood. Look, look at Grim just following her around. It's like he knows she's going to die. There, Brayden praying by the pond. Where does the headband go? We lost the headband. Discovered thyself. She's happy that she discovered that she's gloomy. That's nice. Oh boy, what have I done from cheating for two days? Honestly. Oh, look at poor Esther napping on the ground. Oh, she passed out. Oh, poor baby. Yeah, so even if Brayden came back from the dead, I will still leave her with the gloomy trait because with the famine and the anxiety that it brings. It's a hard time to live through and it might have made her a bit stressed out for the future. So for now, I am going to leave it. All right, so it is the end of the day. Everybody is going to bed. So we have a few roles to do in the side household. So I am going to go do that. All right, so I am here in the Baker household to do the birthday roll for baby Andrio here, who is Cecilia's last born. That means all seven of her children, assuming he survives, of course, will now be at the child life stage. So he cannot roll a nine or a 19. 14, and he is fine. We are going to get this little guy aged up. And then I am going to give him a quick makeover. So let's see. He's creepy, optimistic, kleptomaniac. All right. That's, uh, that's interesting. And what's that on his cheek? Huh. He aged up with a scar. All right, so here is our young Andrew Baker after his makeover. I decided to keep the scar because I think it does give him a little bit of character. Being a creepy kleptomaniac, we could always say that he got into some sort of trouble. Maybe he tried pickpocketing someone and fell down as he was running away. I think he may have developed that personality because of the famine growing up during those hard times maybe gave him an attitude that he's going to do whatever it takes to survive. So this is Andrio, Cecilia's youngest child. And of course, he has the orange clown hair. Oh, what, what are you guys eating? Where did that come from? I was just about to say that when we started the challenge, Cecilia... Uh, Andrea likes fitness. Okay. Cecilia was the one in the best financial position, you know? Her brother and sister, Frederick and Gemma, were both peasants living on small farms. While Cecilia married up, you know, she married Geoffrey, who already had a commerce. And now, during the famine, this family is actually the one that finds itself in the worst position because, uh, yeah, let's just ignore all the bread here. There we go. Um, right, so with their profession being related to food, I'm assuming that they 
have the most issues. Oop. So they probably have issues sourcing... Oh my god, so many pop-ups. Yeah, so they probably have a lot of issues sourcing grain and flour and everything to be able to keep the bakery running. And so the famine is probably hitting them really hard. And, you know, having seven children to provide for is pretty intense. And, and Rio, what are you doing? Oh, well, at least it got rid of it. So compared to Gemma and Frederick's families, they are probably struggling a lot more. Can Andrea pickpocket his own dad? No. No, he can't. Oh, it would have been a, a good occasion to practice before I send him out into the wild. Fear of being inferior. Really? What's wrong with that sim from being near a creepy sim? This sim gets embarrassed? This sim gets embarrassed for the behavior of their creepy friends or loved ones. <laughs> So he probably wouldn't have any qualms about going out to steal food or go poaching. Um, but I think his parents are more upstanding than that and they will not be going out poaching. They are going to try to survive with what they have and what they're able to get from Trader Jacques. And I think Frederick might also take a bit of pity on them and try to help them out by giving them some of his own food. So all in all, it is not really looking good for the Baker family that has so many children during the famine. At least they don't have any young children anymore. I mean like toddlers and infants. So I am now going to move on to the Revere's family. All right, here we are in the Revere's family and it is now baby August's birthday. So we're gonna be rolling to see if he becomes a child. All right, rolling to see if Gemma's oldest son makes it. And he does. All right. I'm happy because Gemma does not have many children and they are still very young and very much in danger. All right, so let's get this little guy aged up and see what his traits are going to be. And while we're here, I'm also whoop, I'm also going to give a bit of a makeover to Julien because it kind of annoys me that he has this graying hair. What? Uh, oh, okay, that's, that's fine. Why is Sir Lucan cooking? It's a famine. It's, it's, you shouldn't be cooking. Uh, okay, so he was a quick learner and he is heroic, insane, and perky. Well, I said I could change one trait and I am going to get rid of the insane trait. So, August is now heroic and perky. So what other trait could we give him that would make sense? I could always leave it blank and choose later because there are some more traits that become available when they age up into teens and then more again when they age up into adults. Because the mod that I have that adds 100 traits has a bunch of physical traits that aren't available to younger kids. Like there's a... Uh... Yeah, there are a bunch of traits like uh, ugly or plain looking or attractive and that sort of, of thing. Well, he was a quick learner, so maybe we should go with something that has to do with the mental skill. Rocket? Oh, loves to run around, get hype, fight themselves, and carry around a secret sugar stash. Actually, that, that would kind of make sense with him being perky and heroic. So I think this is specifically a child trait so i'm gonna give him this one and then when he ages up again then we can try and find something that has to do with him being a quick learner he uh has the same haircut as kaylin but he i think he might look a little bit like lucan it's hard to tell all right so i am going to go give this little guy a makeover and also i will give one to julien since i'm there all right, so here is our little August. I realized by looking at the color swatches for the hairs that he actually has the same hair color as Lucan, and so does Julien. So I was, I thought that they all had Amos's hair color, but Amos's hair is actually CC, and he doesn't have the same swatches as everyone else. So I'm not actually sure whose hair color all of the kids have now because in fact Lucan also has CC hair so his hair is this one. Oh, so the kids don't even have his hair color at all so yeah so I thought 
they had the sort of graying hair that Amos has, but they don't, so I have no clue whose sons these two are. The game really wants me to know that all the chickens are dying, but you know, that's fine. I am not going to get rid of the horse just because, well, the horse doesn't produce anything, so I am going to keep it as a sim and not as a pet, okay? Run around? <laughs> Is that because he's perky? Oh no, it must be because he's a rocket. Uh, okay, so I'm actually going to have Lucan come and interact. I think Lucan is still trying to figure out if these kids are his or not. Yeah, I really have no clue if there's a resemblance between these two. Uh, he wants to hug Sir Lucan. That's so cute. I will do that. And you know, I think Amos... Uh, he's playing in the pond. So I think Amos might see Lucan interacting with August and Julien and start thinking, you know, that maybe Lucan isn't as bad as he thought. He may have gotten the wrong impression about him and Gemma after all. And he might be thinking he should give another chance to his son Lucan. You know, with Tobias now living in Willow Creek, Sir Amos might be considering leaving the estate to Sir Lucan after all, and he might actually consider sending the children to Tobias, because if Sir Lucan takes over the manor, he's going to get married, he's going to have the kids of his own, and he... Sir Amos probably believes that Tobias is going to be a better influence on the kids than Sir Lucan, and with Amos sensing, you know, he's getting older and with the famine and more bandits, he might not feel like he can protect them enough and he doesn't trust that Lucan is going to be able to protect them. So I think he's going to be planning to send the kids off to Willow Creek. And of course, when Lucan learns about this, he probably isn't very happy because although he won't say it, he wonders if these kids might be his. So I think he is going to have a discussion with his father, argue about house rules. Yeah, okay, why not? I think he's going to have a discussion with him, you know, saying, well, I could take one of the kids to be my squire, you know, you don't need to send them so far away. Well, that might be a bit too violent, but okay. So they might be getting into a bit of an argument over what is going to happen to Gemma's kids. Avis is probably just telling him, you know, these are my kids, I can do whatever I want with them. And Lucan is just going to say, yeah, but is that really what is the best for them? You know, these kids were born here, they're Gemma's kids, and I can give them a home and I can raise them to be knights, you know, especially because August does seem to want to be a knight, whereas Tobias wasn't really a knight. He was just a nobleman, you know, he didn't train as Sir Lucan did. So Sir Lucan thinks that he would be better suited to teach the kids how to become knights, whereas Sir Amos just doesn't really trust Lucan's nature. So I think that might leave them with a bit of a sour taste in their mouth. He wants to prepare watermelon salad. That's oddly specific. So that is going to be a situation to be continued. I don't know how badly the famine affected people of higher class. I'm guessing their issues might have had more to do with thievery and outlaws more than the actual supply. But then again, I don't know. I mean, even if they receive taxes from the peasants, if the peasants don't have any food anymore and can't pay, well, I guess the uh, higher ups don't get any food either. But um, I don't know. I'd have to go look that up. All right, so it looks like all of these guys are sleeping during the daytime. So uh, I am going to head on back to our main household. All right, we are back in our main household and everybody is just sort of standing around next to the beds. Uh, Frederick, what are you wearing? Gabriella is going through a phase. All right, so Gabriella, it's your turn. I think I am going to take you into cast and I am going to play around with your traits because we are not allowed to have lactose intolerant and i think nobody likes the insane trait so why not let's go and see what we can do with gabriella's traits oh and look at frederick here taking care of his poopy little sister and he's putting her down without changing the diaper thanks frederick that was really useful all right so 
It is time to change up these traits. Delightful, I feel, is fine, but... Okay. Uh, we are going to remove Insane, and we are going to remove Lactose Intolerance. So I'm going to re-roll. Okay, so oh, she's a genius now instead. Self-assured child of summer, happier and more productive during summer season. Well, I'm not really sure about this either. Hang on. Here's how I see this. So delightful was fine. And instead of child of summer, I feel like she should get the child of nature trait. Uh, these are sims who excel at fishing, gardening, herbalism, and flower arrangement because she spent so much time outside with her dad and watching him work on the farm and I just feel like it would make more sense to have her have this trait instead. So I am going to give her child of nature or of the nature. I mean, child of summer isn't exactly the same. They occasionally receive confident buffs in summer and become energized when there are thunderstorms or heavy rain. Oh, this is kind of interesting. All right, you know what? I am going to give her both of them. So she is a child of nature and a child of summer. Oh, no, the other thing is that... Uh, no, okay, no child of summer. Sorry. I don't want the insane trait, but I would be fine with something that's more like absent-minded. They occasionally forget what they were doing... Yeah, I think I'm going to give her absent-minded. So it's not that she's insane. She's just, she just has her head in the clouds. And you know, I can see her, I can see her wanting to go hiking and collecting flowers and herbs. And she might just not be super attentive to what's going on around her. Or she might be a bit forgetful. So I think absent-minded would be just fine with child of nature and delightful. So that's what we're going to go with for Gabriella from now on. All right. Okay, so Stephanie is absent-minded as well. Oh, she is. She's timid and absent-minded. Oh, I forgot about that. Well, it seems like her and Gabriella have things in common. Shades of Schadenfreude. It can be gratifying to see someone suffering depending on the someone. Who who's suffering though? Oh, does he have negative sentiments with his little brother and sister? Oh, look at him go. Oh, he's going to mourn his aunt that he has never known. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to move our graveyard to somewhere else because this is a strange automated autonomous action where they just go and mourn people that they've never known. So I can imagine like three generations down the line, they're going to be mourning people that they barely even heard about. Aww, I'm going to miss hearing that sound when you guys are all gone. It's okay. We'll buy you back in a few years. Oh, bye. Uh, okay, so everybody's getting pretty hungry. I am going to do their daily meal. And you know what? Raiden is feeling confident. I think he's going to say, Ma, sit down, put your feet up. I am going to make supper. He's going to make potato and onion soup. Even if I don't think they know what potatoes are yet. Uh, it's time for prom. Uh, no thanks. Although, you know... If I went and edited the prom location, we could have it just be like a dance for teens where they could meet potential future spouses. So I might actually do that uh, next week, which, uh, well, it's still going to be the famine, but so he's 13 and he's going to be 14. So the next prom, he would be about 15, so he would be pretty close to being able to get married. So I might do that in between episodes. I, I'll check if I can edit the uh, the prom location and have it look a bit more medieval. And we could always use that as a way to get uh, teen sims to meet and poten potentially get married. Oh boy, very playful. Brayden, don't you frickin' dare. Uh, uh oh, I think she has acne. Oh, that is some weird looking... Oh no, 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 no. Is she sick? She's sick. Why? Why are all of our sims getting so sick so often? I... Oh no. Okay, well, we gotta do it. Let's roll. Yeah, I'm not happy about this either, Stephanie. I'm honestly beginning to regret the rule that I invented. All right, here we go. Rolling a d20. Ooh, shoo. okay. And she's fine. 
Okay, so Stephanie, you are going to come get a glass of water before you infect other people. Adriana and Esther are jokesters. Yeah, sure, everybody's a jokester. Okay, so I am going to be sending all of these guys to bed. And we are going to be starting the last day of the year. Great, Gemma's ghost is here to let us know how filthy the place is. So, Gabriella woke up at 5 a.m. to go mourn Gemma. I'm not even sure if she's met Gemma before. So the Sims really have a strange obsession with the dead. I took a look at how much food that we have left in our pantry, or at least how many ingredients that we still have. And I was expecting us to have quite a bit left, but I am surprised and a little scared to see that we actually don't have that much food left at the moment. It is currently the last day of the year, so I think I'm going to have a few of our sims go out foraging to get some ingredients. Maybe we can make some flour and some bread. Noah, you really don't get the message, do you? I brought the violin in another house because I didn't want to listen to you. Um, alright, so the kids can't go foraging, so I'm gonna send Gabriella to go pick flowers. I think... I think the reasoning behind this is that she thinks maybe she can trade in the flowers or sell them to be able to get food. Since it's a famine, I'm not sure how well that's going to work, but she can always try. And of course, Rosemary is tense from having... No, 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 no. Okay, just a really weird dream. Okay, you'd better not be sick, Brayden. I can only save you once a year, okay? I mean, not that it's really a rule, but I, I can't deal with him dying again in the in a single year. It's just too much. Why is everybody... Uh, they're all coming down with something. I'm sure they are. I just don't have the mood yet. Poor Brayden. He needs some fun and social. We need a girlfriend. Oh, and the traitor is here. Uh, oh boy. Brayden. Really weird dream. Crying toddler. He needs amusement. We are going to have to find something fun to do for Brayden and I think even Stephanie. Yeah, Stephanie's fun is low as well. So I'm going to have her take a quick shower and I think I'm going to send them to the tavern to go play cards, maybe meet up with a few other teens. And of course, that means we're going to have to roll to see if they get attacked on the way. And with the way this episode has been going, I'm not sure how lucky we're going to be, but we're going to take that chance because it looks like they just don't have anything fun enough here. Right, I don't remember if I mentioned I decided not to get the mod that reduces the value of nectar simply because it also changed the recipe to make nectar and it used way too many ingredients that I find just isn't... It would make it too difficult because we don't harvest more often than once a season so it would be too difficult at that point and it does take seven years to get aged nectar so... I mean seven in-game days, which is almost two years, so I feel like it's kind of fair. All right, so we are going to take our three teens out to the tavern or the inn. We could go either way. Oh, poor Frederick. He has a sad moodlet saying missing furry friends. Well, it's going to take a few years before we can get more furry friends for you. Poor Frederick. All right, so here we are at the local tavern and he's feeling tense about someone nearby. And you know what? I really am not sure who it is. I thought he only had bad sentiments with Noah. Oh, it's Stephanie? He has a deep-seated grudge against Stephanie? Why, they're best friends. They're the only ones with a close dynamic. Okay, I guess at some point when she was having a mean streak, they uh, had a disagreement. That's so sad. Okay, so I invited to come with us our old friend Quentin here. And this here is Brandon. So he is now the blacksmith. If you remember, he was Stephanie's friend. No, Brayden. No, don't you dare. Don't you dare be sick. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're going to have quite a few rolls to do now. <sighs> okay, so we're going to roll to see if Brayden passes away again for a second time in the same year because of a mysterious illness. He's fine. 
And the other role that we need to do is to see if we have an encounter because we're traveling. So we are going to start by flipping a coin. And tails means we do not meet anyone. So we are lucky for now. Okay, so far so good. So Brayden wants to have a little bit of fun. So I am going to have him come and play cards with his good friend Quentin and his brother. And I am going to let Stephanie and Brandon, right? Okay, Brayden and Brandon. This is going to get a little bit confusing. So I'm going to let these two chat a little. Reveal crush. What? Since when does she have a crush on him? This is literally the first time that they've seen each other as teens. All right, so let's just take a look at how well these two... Okay, so she perceives him as basic looking. Well, okay, so she might not really be attracted to him. Right, so I created a household of guards. Uh, oh, and it seems like this guard is also a mixologist. Well, why not? All right, okay, so this is good. It is bringing Brayden's fun and social up. Goodbye. Why? Where's he going? Oh. Bye, Quentin. That was sudden. Huh. Everyone we came with just left. Okay. Uh, well, I created a club of teens in case this happened. So we are going to start a gathering. There seems to be something wrong with getting people to a community lot. I just started a club gathering. Where is everyone? Oh, all right. Okay, so here they are. So I am going to have Stephanie come and play horseshoes with Brandon, her good old friend. All right. Okay. So this here is Fatima. So she is the legitimate daughter of Staunton and so half sister to Quentin. So I randomized her traits and she ended up with a barfly trait. And so I gave her a outfit that is a little more suited to a peasant. I would assume that she is a little adventurous like her brother Quentin. And so it seems like she tagged along while they're here. I am going to have Brayden chat with her a little. Rave about growing up. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, and he wants to be friendly with Fatima. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. And we have the local bard who is here as well. I am going to have Stephanie introduce herself to him. Uh, invite to play. No, we're going to do a friendly introduction. And I don't know why Cecilia is here hanging out with the teens. Maybe she's, uh, acting as a bit of a chaperone. And Frederick is watching TV. So he is going to come and also introduce himself to everyone. Aha. Okay. And now we have Jeanette who's here. So Jeanette is actually Brandon's sister. Oh, and we've got Eleonora, the Miller's daughter. So we are also going to introduce ourselves to her. Ah, oh, Brayden. Hysterical. All right. So Brayden has now met Eleonora, Fatima, and Jeanette. So let's take a look at if he has any... Oh, he has amazing compatibility with Eleonora. Perceived as very attractive. Right, so I don't remember if I properly introduced Eleonora or not, but she is the daughter of Greta, who I don't know if you remember, but she once showed up at our door to fix our well. It looks like she and Brayden might be very compatible. I was really planning for him to perhaps woo Fatima since she comes from a richer family, but if he really has better chemistry with Eleonora, then she is always an option as well. And what about Jeanette? Uh, so he literally just feels nothing about her. Okay. Maybe he hasn't really spoken to her, so let's go talk about grilled cheese. So what about Stephanie? How does she feel about Darnell the Bard? So he is basic looking and their first sentiments 
They both feel like the other is interesting. Okay, so the reason I thought Stephanie might be interested in a bard is that when she was younger, she very much enjoyed stories and creativity. So she can go ahead and speak to him for a little. And the only other teen that's here at the moment is Brandon. And we already established that she perceives him to be basic looking. All right. And what about Frederick? Does he have any sentiments about anyone? Oh boy, okay. So he thinks Jeanette is immature and she thinks he's annoying and she is unattractive. Okay then, so he is not going to be interested in Jeanette. And what about Eleonora? Reasonable, interesting, good compatibility. Okay, and what about Fatima? He sees her as very attractive, but she thinks that he is distant. And he thinks she's interesting. Okay. Well, let's get Frederick to speak a bit more to Fatima then. Oh, invite Fatima to dance. Sure, why not? Who are you and why are you dressed that way? Uh, I don't remember if I checked how Brayden feels about Fatima. Oh, so he thinks Fatima is extremely attractive. Okay. All right, so of course he doesn't have any first impressions with her because he already knew her, but currently Brayden finds Eleonora and Fatima both very attractive. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just pretend it's uh, medieval music that's playing here. All right, so it is getting late, so I think I'm going to send these guys home. Since I don't think Stephanie has actually eaten today, I'm going to have her uh, grab a bite to eat before she goes to bed. But it's very interesting to see how they feel about the local teens. Uh, these aren't all the teens. Uh, that's just as many as I could fit into a single club. So if they get enough points, I'm going to keep adding more. All right, so we are now back in our main household and I accidentally brought everyone with us. I did notice that we got this notification. Frederick Jr. stopped what they were thinking about for a moment and found themselves staring at Eleonora and Brayden found himself staring at Fatima. So we've got something started here. All right, so it is the end of the day and also the end of the year, so I am going to leave this part here and where are you guys going? The first year of the famine has certainly been an interesting one with our heir Brayden dying of a cardiac explosion, but thankfully he is our first successful plea with the Grim Reaper. Next year we only have one birthday and that will be Allison's toddler role, we will also see the deaths of a few of the sims who failed their famine rolls, and we will be pleading to see if we can perhaps save some of them. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.